Now, in November 2012, Corkman Tom Murphy was diagnosed with melanoma after he noticed a bump on his arm. Um, he had a mole removed, but after receiving the all clear a year and a half later, the melanoma returned when another lump appeared on his arm. Tom received treatment and is now in remission. Tom joins us this morning alongside medical oncologist Dr Janice Walsh and she is here to discuss how to protect yourself in the sun, something Irish people are getting more and more exposed to and getting more and more used to. Good morning to you both and thank you for joining Good us. Morning. Tom, thank you. great to see you looking so well and doing so well. well you yes. had this mole in your arm for a long, long time. Yeah, I had the mole taken out of us about 25 years ago, but then a bump about seven years ago appeared here in my arm. And we were in America. I have a son over there, he's a golf professional, and uh, we were out playing one day. And uh, he said to him, or his friend who was a surgeon, he said, Dad has a bump there in his arm, so... And was it just like a little, little lump? Just, just, uh, just a lump. A lump, and it wasn't just, discoloured it, or anything, or sore, sore? Nothing, absolutely nothing. So, went into his dermatologist colleague and she said, that has to come out. So he did nothing and he took me into his clinic the following morning and took it out then and there. So, uh, wrong, it was coming up to Christmas, we came home and I was referred to Professor McCaffrey in the matter. And uh, I was on interfering for a year and a half. And what did that involve? What did that mean? Well, I, I was uh, in an, an injection forum and I was injecting it into my tummy uh, five times a week. And were you able to do this yourself? Yes, I was. At I home. was because I, I, I had a good bit of training in first aid and things like that, so I was able to I was able to do it myself. So at the end of the year and a half, I got the all clear. But by September, there was another bump appear there. In the same area? In the same area, right alongside it. Okay. And it was similar to the previous bump? <laughs> yes. So, so this time you... Went back to Mr McCaffrey and he did scans and he said, Tom, he said, no easy way of telling you, your melanoma's back. Uh, but now he said, there's a complication in your two lungs as well. So it was like being hit with a sledgehammer. You suddenly confronted and we thought everything was good and all of a sudden went back to square one again. So he suggested, he said there was a clinical trial just starting and it was going down the uh, road of immunotherapy. Whole new idea. And, and he would said... Have, would I, traditional therapies not have worked for you? Or well, the chances are that it, 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 it probably wouldn't. He felt this... He felt, he felt this outcome. was the best chance that I had. And I... Uh, uh, went on the treatment for 12 weeks and when I was scanned again, everything was gone. You could see my arm, you could see the, the bump melting away in my arm. So you didn't have to have it removed no. this time? Well, he said at the time I could, but he said if another one appears, you'll we'd be, you know, gathering you, your uh, nervous system could be affected and, you know, I think this is the best way to go. So... I went on the, on the clinical trial. Uh, I mean, you, you're, you're apprehensive in a situation like that mm. because you don't know whether it is going to be good or otherwise. It's but not proven you have to you have to You have to take that well, you're chance. You're fighting for your life, Tom, so you're, mm? going to, you're fighting for your life, so you're going to do oh, whatever you... Of course you are. Of yeah. course you are. And, and uh, you know, you want to see your grandchildren. And as a result of what has happened, for the last five years, I've been coming here to Dublin every two weeks. Uh, at the end of the 12 weeks of the treatment, the intensive treatment, everything was gone when I was scanned again. So then I've been on a maintenance programme for the last uh, five and four and a half years. You must be coming up to all clear time then, so are you? Four weeks ago, circle completed, ah, I got the all clear. Ah. So that was I, a happy I'm, day. I have, I, well, I mean, uh, uh, as Mr McCaffrey explained to me, he said at the time, he said, Tom, he said, I don't think you realised how serious the situation was. OK. And how because did that treatment make you feel at the time? Well, for, Are there side for effects? whatever weird reason, I never had side effects. They don't know why, but 
whatever this fella down in South Kerry is, whether it's the fresh air down there or what. <laughs> the good life uh, is, from is, 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 do, is, 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 is doing it, but uh, I never had side effects. So, uh, as he said to me four weeks ago, he said, Tom, he said, but for the trial, well, I don't think we'll be having this conversation. Actually, can, uh, Dennis, can I bring you in there? Because you're the medical oncologist. Uh, um, but for the trial and obviously catching it as early as you did and being aware, um, how, how badly could this have turned out? Badly. So, I mean, to answer your question in terms of standard care chemotherapies, we've known with melanoma that the response rates are extremely low. So traditionally, although we would have recommended those forms of therapy, we have never had good results with them. And I suppose for a long time, we've known that immunotherapy works with solid tumours, so cancers such as this. But a melanoma is way ahead of the game in comparison to a lot of other solid tumours. And that is on the basis of previous data that have been completed in the States. So I suppose I always have to commend people like Tom, because it is a leap of faith, mm -hmm. isn't it? To go into a clinical trial and put your faith in your doctor saying that this is the best result for you. But I mean, there is no um, question that we have made tremendous strides in the outcomes of patients with metastatic melanoma. And this was stage four disease. So what he's talking about, although you talk about that all clear at five years, that's a very different scenario. In the setting where somebody is diagnosed with a disease that affects the lung, we talk to those people about the fact that they are dealing with an incurable cancer. And yet we know with the advent of new therapies such as immunotherapy that we now have long-term survivors such as Tom who will need to be watched but that can come off these therapies and may be cured of these diseases. Is that immunotherapy, the trial I suppose that you were on, is that <coughs> now widely available? Correct. So again, the good thing for melanoma is because it's so far ahead of other solid tumours, we now have reimbursement in Ireland so we can get the same types of treatments that we can get internationally, which is very important. I suppose the big thing then for people to be able to avail of this treatment, for this treatment to work, is early detection. Correct. So I suppose in terms of the facts related to melanoma, we are seeing a consistently increase in incidence. So about 2 to 5% per year in the numbers in Ireland. And we have hot spots that are associated with it. The sunny southeast and Cork have the highest rates. Um, and of course, they're associated with warmer, slightly warmer climate. There's no question that there's an association with melanoma and other types of skin cancer with sun exposure, accumulative sun exposure, sunburn. So really, I suppose the Marie Keith message is that prevention is better than cure. Let's do everything we can to reduce the likelihood of these kind of things occurring. As an oncologist who specialises in melanoma, when you see weather that like we've had over the last mm -hmm. month and the fact that the climatologists tell us that we're going to see more and more and more of this, mm -hmm. do you think dear God, this is going to get so much worse. Well, we are definitely going to have increasing levels of melanoma. I mean, our level is about a fourth of what we see in Australia, and there's a massive national campaign. When you're down there, you see signs all over the place in terms of the things to do to keep yourself safe. So there's no question that we will see increases in the numbers and probably at a greater rate than what we're seeing at the moment. I think as an Irish population, we tend to have the idea that heat here isn't like heat abroad, and yet we go to Spain and we slather on the factor 20, 30, etc but we're grand out in the back garden and let's not do anything but it is really critically important that the um, sun cream that we would use away is used here. Would you see the people diagnosed tend to be a little older? Um... It varies the distribution is that you have about 50% of people under 65 and then 50% are over 65. So no evidence that young people are perhaps more careful than older people <laughs> would have been because they simply wouldn't have had the advice 30, 40, 50 years ago? Well I think that there is definitely changing habits we're seeing reductions in sun bed use thankfully um, and there's no question that that sun damage is associated with one increased risk of sunburn it's a surrogate marker for people who love the sun and love to sun worship and more more sun exposure. Is there anything other than sun exposure that can Well, some lead families to can be there are family traits that can be associated with increased risk or a genetic risk of developing melanoma, but far by far it's sun exposure is the thing that we need to tackle. Okay, we're nearly at the end. Tom, just before we go, we didn't actually mention the Marie Keating uh, Foundation at all, but I mean you're a huge supporter of you come and you, you do talks for them and uh, you, you come and Well I'd like to I like them to in help bloom. Out. I mean they are a fantastic organisation. There's no Were they of much support and comfort to you? Hmm? Were they have much support to you? Well I mean I, I was involved with them out in bloom there uh, recently we with the garden outside and I met a, 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 you know a host of people and one particular lady from Galway uh, she, she said 
had a chat with me and the husband said, she's going under the knife on, on, on Tuesday. Mm. And uh, we hugged each other and we said, we're still fighting. And God. that's what it's all about. Putting up the good fights. Putting and I suppose, as you say, and, coming on here today and making people aware. Mm. Exactly. That's the, that's the important that's thing. The that is the message. Make them aware. Look, if you have... I'm covered in moles, but over 90% of them are absolutely benign. But it is the one that will, you know, be itchy or uh, change colour or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's easy to go to your GP mm. and have it checked out and... If it's more than likely, it's OK. Thank God for your lovely observant son back in America all well, those years that's, ago. Uh, that's it. That's it. And we're, we're, and it's we're, long we're here to, life. We, you know. <laughs> and just, oh, that's and, a whole different uh, conversation. And just before, before we go, I would like to thank our, my, as I call them, Tom's Angels yeah. in the Day Oncology Ward in, in uh, the matter. And uh, Professor McCaffrey, of course. Well, listen, thank uh, you, Tom. Wonderful people. Uh, well, thank we're you, delighted Julio. for you, Tom. Thank you. Continue good health. Cheers, thank, thank you. Thank you. Don't Pleasure. forget, if you haven't donated and you can afford to donate, there's still plenty of time. It's going to such a good cause, and we're looking here at the great work that they do. Four euro is what you'll donate. Text Marie to 5300. 50300 to donate four euro.